Okay, so problem 2.3 of Crippen's fourth edition. Uh, the problem reads, find the electric field at distance Z above one end of a straight line segment of length L, as shown in this figure, that carries a uniform line charge lambda. Okay, so we're going to look for the electric field. Okay, given a uniform line charge, lambda. And then we will check that the equation or the formula that will be, uh, that will be determined which is consistent with that when you expect for the case of Z much greater than F. So this uh, second part of the problem has been demonstrated uh, a number of times throughout the examples in this book. Okay, so in this case, what we're going to do here is we're going to consider this line charge with uniform charge density lambda. And then uh, we're going to use Coulomb's law to determine that electric field at this point. Okay, so to start with, let's identify first our, because remember that uh, the, uh, uh, this line can be divided into several infinitesimal charges dq. Okay, which is equal to uh, the line charge density times the infinitesimal length. If we're going to consider this direction to be x and this direction to be z, okay, this dq or infinitesimal charge will be lambda dx. And where is that here? So we can represent that by placing an infinite, a short infinitesimal line charge here. Okay. So this is your DQ. Uh, sorry, this is your uh, DQ. Okay, the length of this dq would be dx. And then we're going to integrate this infinitesimal length dx from 0 to L. Okay, so uh, with respect to this infinitesimal or element charge, uh, this element charge ex uh, has an electric field at this point P. That electric field. Okay, uh, it would be uh, represented by, let's say this is a positive charge. So it would look something like this. So this would be your DE. DE means the, uh, a, a, the infinitesimal electric field due to this infinitesimal charge DQ. Okay, so we know that this will uh, the uh, the point with uh, the distance between the point P to our line charge would be script R. Okay, so this script R is related to Z and the position of DQ from our origin. This is your origin. That would be X. So this length would be x, okay? So script r would be equal to square root of x squared plus z squared, okay? We can also identify the following. We can identify this angle theta, which is the same as this angle theta. And why do we need to identify theta? That's because we need to uh, resolve this electric field into its x and z components. So in this case, this will be the x component, the e 
x and the y component or z component this so this will be d e z okay now uh, in uh, one of the important things that we need to set uh, here is that because we are need to know the x and z components of this infinitesimal uh, electric field. So that means we need to find what are these trigonometric functions, sine theta, as well as cosine theta. In this case, sine theta would be x over script R or X divided by square root of X squared plus Z squared. Same goes for cosine. So cosine theta would be Z divided by square root of X squared plus Z squared. Okay, so why do we need to do this? We need to do this so that we would be able to express the components in terms of the act in terms of the coordinate z and x later. Okay. Now the electric field DE okay, is uh, is defined or is given as uh, by Coulomb's law as one over four pi. Epsilon naught times dq over script r squared r hat. Okay, and in terms of its unit vectors x hat and z hat, this is negative d e x x hat plus d e z z hat. Where in DEX and DEZ are the Z magnitudes of the X and Z components of this infinitesimal electric field. Okay, so let's start with, let's start computing for DEX. DEX is the magnitude of E, so that's one over four pi epsilon naught, dq over r squared times sine theta. So here we omit the direction of dex because the direction is negative x hat and that has been already taken care of this negative sign and x hat. Okay, so here we're just going to look at the length of this vector. Okay, so we know that sine theta is x over square root of x squared plus z squared, and r squared is square root of x squared, uh, sorry, uh, r squared is equal to x squared plus z squared. So that means we can rewrite this as dq. over x squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. And we know that dq is given by lambda dx. So we can rewrite dq as lambda dx. Okay, so, z, uh, so the denominator here should be x squared plus z squared. Okay, so now we can now calculate the total electric field along the x direction, which is just the integral of this. So taking out all the constants of integrations, uh, constant when you integrate, so this becomes lambda over 4 pi epsilon times the integral of dx over uh, x squared plus z squared to the 3 halves. And then we are going to 
limit our integration from 0 to n. Okay? I'm not going to the details on how to calculate this integral because I know for a fact that you can already do that even if you're sleeping. So let's go to uh, let's go to the end result. The end result of e x would be equal to a lambda over four pi epsilon naught times one over z minus one over square root of x squared plus uh, sorry one over square root of L squared plus Z squared. Okay, so this is now the X component of the net electric field of your uh, due to this wire. And then we can do the same for the Z components. Okay, so for the Z components, so DZ, uh, DEZ will now be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times dq, which is lambda dx, okay, ah, oh, sorry, uh, sorry about that, this should be, okay, sorry about that, this should be lambda x, because there's an x here, okay, so there should be an x here. Okay, that should be correct. Now, in this case, in our case here for dz, okay, this will be lambda dx, so that's our dq, times divided by uh, r squared, which is x squared, plus z squared, okay? And then times cosine theta, which is z divided by square root of x squared plus z squared. So this becomes z. And then the exponent here would be 3 halves. Okay, so that means the net electric field in the z direction would be equal to lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught times the integral from 0 to L. Again, we're going to integrate dx from 0 to L. So this becomes z because z is not part of this integration. And then this becomes dx over uh, dx over x squared plus z squared to the three halves. And then again, you can just uh, do the integration while you're sleeping. So this becomes uh, lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught times L divided by square root of L squared plus Z squared. So this will be your easy. Okay, easy, right? So that means we can now assemble our electric field, total electric field or net electric field. will just be EX X hats plus easy uh, my, uh, negative e x x hat plus easy z hat okay lambda and 4 pi epsilon naught sorry there should be a z here yes okay so lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught is constant so we can write it here, lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught times negative of this. So this is negative 1 over z plus 1 over 
square root of L squared plus Z squared X hat plus this one, which is L over Z times square root of L squared plus Z squared. Z hat. So this is now your result. Okay. Now it's mentioned here that let's check that uh, you, the the equation that we uh, obtained is consistent with that when you expect for the case of z much greater than l. So what do we mean by what do, what do we mean by this case? So remember that in our previous example, when our point p is very very far away from your charge this charge will be will appear as if it is a point charge okay so if this is a point charge the charge the total charge of this object will just be equal to lambda times l right so now if z is much greater than l okay this equation this uh, factor square root of L squared plus Z squared will just be equal to Z because L is much less than Z. So when you take a square, a very small size, a very small length, it will be very, very much, uh, it will be much, much, much smaller than your Z squared. Okay, so you take the square root of Z squared, that is Z. So that's one over Z. And this is negative one over Z. So that means this component, the x component, will uh, will be will be will vanish. Okay. The same thing goes here. If l if l is much less than z or z is much greater than l, this factor will be just z. So this becomes the electric field becomes. becomes lambda times L divided by 4 pi epsilon naught times Z times Z, so that's Z squared, which is just equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times Q total or total charge of the of your wire divided by Z squared, where Z is the distance from your wire or from your charge to your point. So this will appear as if it is a point charge. Okay, so that means our equation here has, is consistent to our expectation for Z is greater than 